In cycling, the tension between team loyalty and personal glory is always finely balanced. But in no discipline is individual success so deeply invested in team performance than in the often dreaded team time trial. Garmin Sharp learned the hard way at last year's Giro d'Italia. A second's loss of focus saw Dan Martin crash out in devastating fashion. On the very first day of the race, in front of his home crowd. At this year's Giro d'Italia opening team time trial, the newly merged Cannondale Garmin team is eager to avoid a repeat of last year's drama. And time trial coach Sebastian Weber is the man at the helm. I mean, the worst thing that you can do is come to them and say, don't crash, because then for sure they will crash. So I think the best way to tackle with that is not to address it again, like don't shift the focus to the crash of last year. Focus on this year's race, focus on the actual race, make sure this is prepared well, this is the most important thing. And what better preparation is there for a big Italian stage race than a small Italian stage race, the Giro del Trentino. InCycle joined Cannondale Garmin on their morning recce of the 13-kilometer course. Basically, you look for everything. You look for the parkour, you look for the equipment that you want to use, for the weather conditions, for the wind, for the riders that you have, who you have as the reserve riders, and just in case somebody gets sick in the last moment or whatsoever. And then you try to make up a schedule, like how to tackle with a specific course. Once Sebastian is familiar with the route, it's time to turn what is on paper into practice. Here in the recon, we are we're checking the checking the roads, checking the corners, and uh, try out the order. So yesterday we tried a slightly different order, and we made some changes to based on what we've seen yesterday in training. And now it's about getting the guys familiar with the parkour and uh, familiar with the guy in front of them. One recce done. Okay, so third last guy out in the drops, and I want you to do a real start. And one more to go, a chance to finalise the rider order after some necessary adjustments. It can be um, the trust in, in the guy in front of you. Uh, how, how much do you trust him going through the corners so that you stay very close in, uh, on his wheel and stay in the same line. Uh, it can be purely a performance thing. For rider Heijdal, Davide Villella and Nathan Brown, this is the last time that they will compete together before the Giro d'Italia. Although, however the riders, the challenge in a team time trial is uniting the inevitably varied skill set of a stage race lineup. You're using riders in the front for a short amount of time and then you try to give them some rest while they draft their teammates. It's a little bit faster guys, more explosive guys, a little more anaerobic power guys. Uh, usually do better in the TTT compared to the TT. Going into the race, preparing the race, um, I have like a like a like a schedule of what I suppose the riders to put out and for how long, and this kind of sets up like uh, leading times and recovery times. And I use the power data afterwards analyzed, but there's no target power set. Like you know, there's a target speed set. With all the preparation done, it's now all down to the riders, with Sebastian keeping a close eye on them from the race car. Aston are the quickest of the early teams, with team time trial specialist Team Sky and Bora Argon 18 still to come. Cannondale Garmin post the fastest time so far at the intermediate stage, but then this. Oh, down, down, down. With Ted King and Davide Villella down, it's up to their depleted team to regroup and get across the line, while they roll in behind. Bora Argon 18 are the eventual winners, while Cannondale Garmin finished 24 seconds behind in eighth. Back at the hotel, the debrief has already begun. Uh, it seems like uh, one rider was touching the, the, the wheel of the guy in front of him. And you know that's that's a bad thing. Obviously, that can that can happen when you when you go very very fast at this moment. They were they were you know uh, by far above 60 kilometers an hour traveling speed. So uh, we are really lucky and happy that nothing really bad happened uh, to to the riders. It may have been far from the outcome that they wanted, but for the riders, it's a vital reminder of the nature of bike racing and the importance of crisis management. Whatever happens, the team still need to get the best time possible. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, there's some confusion. Um, you worry about your teammates. Um, you don't know exactly what's happening, how they are. And then 
you know, the riders get the signal from the car, they should keep going, and then they need to reorganize, they need to check who's still there, um, then you have gaps in between the riders. So this is where most of the time losses come from normally, and also today, is from, you know, getting, getting the riders back in line and um, working well together and knowing which positions they have to come back in and stuff like that. But despite all the planning, recce's and power meters, the key to success comes down to just one thing. Well, the main secret is to just ride fast, to keep the speed high and don't let the speed drop.